Hi neighbor, my name is Hannah. Welcome back to my channel, Pretty Hippie Me. I just spent five hours total recording this video I'm about to show you about Amanda Ensing. Amanda Ensing is a beauty influencer who's been around on YouTube and Instagram for a long time. She has spent those years presenting herself as a Christian and as a beauty influencer, but she's very recently come under fire over the past couple months because she finally made it known her politics and that she voted for Trump in the most recent election. And that did not go over swimmingly with all of her fans. So on November 9th, she published a video titled What's Next for America? There was a little bit of backlash related to that. On the day after Christmas, she posted a picture of herself and her boyfriend around the Christmas tree, but wearing a MAGA hat and Trump like pajamas. And then she's gotten into like a little drama moment with Manny MUA and she ranted a little bit on her IG stories about it. Most recently, Amanda posted this video to her Instagram talking about her thoughts on the inauguration and some precautions that are being put in place, and it is full of the toxicity that I'm about to discuss in this video. So, you know, if you want some more examples of her behavior when you're done watching this video, go take a look at that. I feel like a well-rounded conversation would include a voice like mine, which is the voice of a Christian person, to respond to what Amanda has been up to. So in this video, I'm coming from a Christian perspective, talking about some patterns that I'm seeing. Amanda has three toxic tactics that she relies on whenever she's in drama or trouble. I think that they're really important for any fan of hers to recognize. This is something I feel particularly passionate about because I grew up in a Christian environment that was full of these toxic tactics myself. And I will be telling you a little bit about that experience in this video as well so that you can see that Amanda's not alone and to be honest these tactics have probably been used on her by Christian leadership in her life causing her to think it's okay to use these tactics on others that's why I'm coming to her from a Christian perspective because I see a lot of my former self in her to let her know as kindly and lovingly as I can that no it's not okay when she's a Christian person who takes her faith so seriously, if she's not certain that she's hearing from another Christian voice, then she might not hear it the same way. So, hi Amanda, I'm a Christian. I'll tell you right here at the front of this video, I appreciate the fact that you are so publicly proud and open and loud about your faith. Very obviously, like, seeking the Lord. So that's why I'm coming to you as a Christian sister, honest to God, just to kind of tell you how some of your words are coming off. That might not be the way that you intend I just hope that she's in a humble kind of listening kind of headspace to be able to hear what I'm saying here in this video. That's my prayer. If this video ever does get to Amanda somehow, while I'm talking, I'm gonna play a video of me making this makeup look. It is not perfect. I was using some new products. We're about to get into it quickly before I do. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, share the video so that Amanda sees it, that would be amazing. I will also link the actual Amanda Ensing videos that I will be referring to. One is her What's Next for America video and a re-upload somebody did of her Instagram story talking about the Manny MUA moment. Also, I need to credit Earth Mother because her video was the first one that introduced me to Amanda Ensing. I need to credit Skelotim because his video about the recent Manny MUA situation is what made me really want to respond to this. Amanda has a lot of followers, many of whom I'm sure are Christian, many of whom I'm sure are not. Those who are Christian are looking up to her as a Christian example. Those who are not Christian are learning about what Christianity means through her and through her example. When an influencer is a Christian influencer and their Christianity is a big part of their channel, that's why I decided to comment on this situation as opposed to many others. It's gonna be a long one, so get a snack, get a drink, <laughs> buckle up. I'm gonna get into it now, actually. To tell you about Amanda and toxic tactics, I'm going to start by going through and analyzing her November 9th video, What's Next for America? 
I'm going to go through this video tactic by tactic and show you where she uses each one, often using multiple tactics at the same time, so that you can get a feel for exactly what to look out for when you're watching her content. Once we are armed with that knowledge, we'll look at the Manny MUA situation because you can see all of these toxic tactics at play in her response to that situation. In Amanda's video, What's Next for America? Go watch that video if you haven't yet. Amanda's first very evident toxic tactic is her tendency to speak for all Christians. I especially take umbrage with this because I don't feel that she represents me as a Christian at all. I don't want Amanda Ensing to be the mouthpiece for Christians. Yeah, or let me let me just get into it. This is one of those points that gets me a little bothered. Forgive me if I get a little miffed in this video. I'm going to really try my best to keep my cool, keep my calm, keep my humility. One last note, I'm so sorry. Um, while I was filming this video, I went back and forth between calling Amanda you and calling Amanda her. Her. For some reason, I like in my mind was talking to her. Generally, if I'm saying you, I'm talking to Amanda, not to you, the viewer. But if you have any questions, please just leave it in the comments below. Thanks, and I'm so sorry. So around the five minutes and 54 seconds to six minutes area of that video, you said, I don't know who needs to hear this, but Christians don't believe in canceling someone's life or career because they don't agree with you. Let me just say, as a Christian person, I do believe in canceling someone if I find that their content is actively harmful to other people. If they are promoting hate speech, speaking hate speech, promoting illegal substances and illegal actions, promoting violence, other things that are actively harmful are definitely, in my book, reasons for cancellation. It was a pretty bold move and a bold statement for Amanda while she was undergoing cancellation to try to say that Christians don't cancel and that it's not a Christian thing to do to cancel people. Considering her audience is largely Christian, it's a little self-serving, wouldn't you say? Canceling someone is not like hunting somebody down to kill them. You still have your in real life life that you can go and live. That's why I have no issue with canceling people who I think are actively harming other people, especially their own fans. I don't think that it's a Christian virtue to not cancel someone. I know that that seems like a small thing, but there's a lot of small things like that where you kind of speak for all Christians in a way that I just don't, I'm not comfortable with. Next on my list. The way I've seen people who say they know who Jesus is and believe in him act and speak online this week makes my stomach turn. Whatever Bible you're reading is not the same Bible that the rest of us are reading. First of all, what a low blow. Like questioning people's sincerity in their Christianity because they questioned your political views. Like, you, who are you to make that judgment, Amanda Ensing? All that that does is cause others in your audience who agree with you to question those fans and doubt those fans and fuels them to lash out and attack those fans who question you. And that's self-serving, manipulative, and toxic as hell. Secondly... I didn't see the comments that you're referring to. I highly doubt that people leaving purely hate comments were coming onto your posts and saying, hi, I'm a Christian person and I think you're ugly. So with that in mind, how do you know that the people leaving you hate comments even were a Christian? Also, in general, influencers who are being canceled don't receive a hundred percent just pure unfounded nasty hate comments. Usually that's like one to five percent of the comments. Most of the comments are their heartfelt fans who are genuinely disappointed and concerned and curious about something that you said or something that you revealed and in this case it's the fact that you voted for Trump. They're surprised. They didn't know that you agreed with Donald Trump. They want to know why. They want to know how it aligns with your faith because that is the big thing that they do know about you is that you do makeup and that you're Christian. Especially Christian people, I would say, would be more likely to come on and say, hi, I'm a Christian and how can you support Donald Trump as a Christian? If that to you is the way that I've seen Christians acting on social media, they're not reading the same Bible as me. I take a big issue with that because what that comes across as to me is they don't agree with me, so they must not be Christian. And again, who are you to make that judgment? 
when you say that's not the same Bible the rest of us are reading, you're separating yourself and your particular segment of Christianity to be above everybody else and better than everybody else. You're the real Christians. And other Christians, they're not real Christians because they're not agreeing with me and living the way that I think Christians should live. I was raised in a church where that was a huge thing that a lot of people said that really honestly made me believe as a child that my physical church location was the only church in the whole entire planet that spoke the true word of God, okay? Because I was a child who was all in in Christianity, all in on my church, soaking up everything that my Christian leaders around me said like a sponge, believing it wholeheartedly because I had no reason not to. So when my pastor would get up, I'm going to get, I might get emotional here, but when my pastor would get up on the pulpit and say, I don't know what those other churches are teaching. I don't know what Bible they're reading, but here at my church, we teach the truth. My Bible says, yada, yada, yada. It made me so afraid and so distrustful of every other Christian person who did not attend my personal church. I don't know how to properly explain to you how frustrating it is to me to see such a young, beautiful person with so much influence over young people saying that type of stuff in a video like this, which is meant to be this open heart, giving hope for the future of America, where at the same time that you say earlier in the video, I'm not here to shame anybody for their beliefs, but then when somebody does disagree with you, they're not reading the same Bible I'm reading. The Bible is a complicated complicated text. That's why there are Bible colleges. That's why there are people who spend their whole lives studying this book to make it make sense. People who spend their whole lives dedicated to the work of God and the word of God still have completely different points of view. Even on topics that are core tenets of the faith, reasonable people can disagree. So to hear you as a young adult say, they're not reading the same Bible I'm reading. Um, they're reading the same Bible as you, they're just interpreting it differently, and that doesn't make them wrong, and that doesn't make them not a Christian, and for you to imply that is highly destructive and hurtful to your young Christian audience that you undoubtedly have, and I, as you can tell, I feel passionately about this. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to cry. That's why I'm getting mad. I have to choose between crying and getting angry. I just did my makeup and I'd rather not cry. Because this phrase came to you so easily and you used it so lightly, it makes me think that there are Christians around you who talk this way. So you're probably just following their example. But I don't think that you realize what a distrust you are causing when you say statements like that. Keep it about you. Keep it about you. This is your platform, your channel, your Instagram, your faith walk. So keep it about you and your opinions. They don't see the Bible the way I do. They're reading it differently than me. That's fine with me. That's a much more accurate statement. That is more about personal interpretation of scripture and faith. But when you say the Bible the rest of us are reading, you make the person disagreeing with you look like they are wrong or different. You shame them. You isolate them. You call them a liar. And in a way, you excommunicate them from the rest of us, the real Christians. And you sow doubt in the minds of your followers toward those people who you consider not to be real Christians when you separate yourselves from them like that. And that is absolutely not what Christianity is about. <sighs> That's not the rant that I planned on going on. But a lot of what she's saying is just much more deeply damaging than it appears on the surface. So sometimes I just need to go into it to fully explain what she's really saying and really implying. This video is going to be really long and I'm so sorry, but I hope that you're still with me. Okay. So that's the second example of Amanda like speaking for all Christians. So the first one was Christians don't cancel people because we disagree with them. The next one is you claim to believe in Jesus, but you disagree with me. You're not reading the same Bible as the rest of us. Next up, I gotta say the amount of influencers and people who have spoken up for themselves and who have spoken their beliefs 
that are against the grain and against what social media wants you to talk about and against what Hollywood wants you to think. There are so many people I have so much respect for now. Like God has just revealed so much in people this week that I'm just like, I have so much love and respect for people that I never saw before. This example is slightly different, but it falls under the same category for me because basically here Amanda is speaking for God, which is even a step above and beyond speaking for all of Christianity. Rather than saying she's happy that the Instagram and Facebook algorithms have really keyed in on the fact that she likes conservative ideas and influencers more than liberal, she's saying that God is the one who's bringing all of these quote-unquote against the grain profiles and people into her life. When you spiritualize it in this way and say that God is showing these things to you, then it implies that God would like to show these things to everybody else. And so the good Christian way to be is to follow these conservative, Trumpy people and profiles. Again, you're speaking for God and speaking for Christianity and telling Christians what's the Christian way to be. And again, I don't agree with you on that. Just because something is against the grain definitely does not mean that it is from God, and that's kind of a dangerous idea to have in your head and to promote to others. This idea also holds the footprints of some conservative media fear-mongering, and I could go on about that, but this video is already too long, so I'll have to do it another time. Let me know if you want to hear about it below. In all three of these examples, we can see that Amanda has a particular idea about what Christianity is that is rather narrow and doesn't include a variety of opinions on much at all. I don't mind her having narrow conservative opinions about Christianity if that's how she wants to live her life and if she finds that fulfilling for her faith. However, what I do have a problem with is her saying that that's just how all Christians are, how all Christians think, and even how God thinks. Amanda Ensing is not God, and she does not get to set the rules of what is and is not Christian behavior, thinking, opinions, etc. To speak for all Christians, it is a manipulative, elitist, toxic way to relate to your audience, Christian and non-Christian. Amanda's second toxic trait that we're going to talk about in this video is that she loves to conflate her faith with her politics. And this is probably one of the bigger things that is evident in her videos, but I really wanted to point out the speaking for all Christians thing before I go into this. Because once it's clear that Amanda does not and should not speak for all Christians, then we can extrapolate from there that just like she has beliefs that not all Christians hold, her tendency to conflate politics and religion is also not necessarily a common Christian mindset. Separation of church and state is one of our founding principles for a reason. That is something that I very much live by. And I wish that Amanda would kind of choose her wording a little bit better in that regard. At this timestamp, she's talking about feeling like she was getting canceled for revealing the fact that she voted for Trump. This is so much bigger than politics. It's so much bigger than who you voted for. This is not an attack essentially on who you voted for. It is an attack on God. Okay, hold up. No, 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 no. People who are upset with you for voting for Trump, how are they attacking God by saying that? I really don't understand. And I don't like the fact that we're this early into the video and you're combining those two together with little to no explanation. I think that you feel attacked that people are mad that you voted for Trump, but that doesn't mean that you getting attacked is God getting attacked. And I'm gonna need you to stop blowing situations out of proportion and making them into what they're not, just like you did with Manny MUA, because all that does is put fear and doubt into people's hearts, and we don't need any more of that right now. Your politics and your faith are not the same thing. And I'm gonna need you to separate it a little bit in your mind, Amanda. You're gonna live a much happier life that way. <laughs> Next up. When I saw people going online saying, how can you say God is in control? And like Christians were getting attacked for saying God is in control. No one was even saying anything about who to vote for. How arrogant do you have to be to think that your thoughts and your ways 
are higher than God's. You talk about people in your comments who were getting attacked for saying God is in control. They weren't even bringing up who they voted for. They were just getting attacked for saying God is in control. Okay. If nobody was talking about who they were voting for, why did you just talk about who they were voting for? <laughs> that makes it seem to me like it was a post, it was a video, it was something where you confirmed that you were a Trump voter. And underneath that, a separate conversation started related to God and God being in control. Because your platform is so Christian, that's a valid sub conversation to have. So as a result, I'm not sure why you are bringing up voting in this moment. And again, kind of conflating the voting and the God talk as if they should be one conversation. When you know Jesus and you are not willing to walk with a crowd of people who only walk together because it's popular and they walk together in this crowd because they're afraid to be alone, yet you're willing to risk it all to walk with God because you know that if you're with God, you're never alone, you've won. So at this timestamp, I can't tell if she's talking about faith or if she's talking about politics because this is a video responding to the fact that people are like outing her for being a Trump supporter. So it makes me think that it's a political thing, which then makes me think, so you're saying that like being a Trump supporter is the same as walking with God? That people who are not Trump supporters are just like following the crowd and it's against God. God's wishes and it's against God's will. Again, with the like, our church, our version of Christianity is the right one. We're not reading the same Bible that we're reading, the right Bible, the right Christians, and not acknowledging the fact that people can be Christian and can have widely different political points of view because they're not the same thing because separation of church and state. In the year 2020, when you made this video, to say that anybody is just following a crowd to be cool and be in your comfort zone, when we're in the era of the most ability to quickly, easily have abundant information and research at your fingertips at the tap of a button, I think it's a huge assumption and a bit condescending to say that everybody who thinks a certain way is just following the crowd. It's very problematic to insinuate that the way to be following Jesus and the way to be following God is to be quote unquote against the crowd, which sounds to me like you're saying to be a Trump supporter, to be conservative. Like, I don't know what you meant to say, but this is how it's coming off. And I'm a Christian person. I'm trying my best to give you the benefit of the doubt here. I understand why you might be getting hate on this video and on Instagram posts and stuff. It's just because your words are unclear. I need you to separate when you're talking about faith, separate when you're talking about politics. And if you in your mind are combining the two of them, it is natural for a person of faith who takes their faith seriously in their day-to-day -day lives to base their politics on the principles of their faith. However, I feel that with Christianity and other faiths where there are huge differences across the board of beliefs and lifestyles and cultural impacts, I think it is unfair and generally wrong to say that there is one particular political way to be as a result of being a Christian. No political party is ever going to perfectly match up with the Christian faith faith, and that's appropriate because America is not a theocracy, it is a place with separation of church and state. And even different groups of Christians cannot agree on what it means to be Christian, so how can any political party ever represent us all fully and truly? Now, at this point in the show, I had gone off on a very long-winded rant describing exactly why I base my progressive politics in my faith as a Christian. However, that is basically a whole video unto itself. I would be happy to make that video for you all, but it is separate from this conversation. As a short summation, I will put up Bible verses on the screen for you so you can go look them up if you're curious as to why I feel that progressive politics are more based in the Bible than Republicans. Republican politics. Basically, I feel that the model of the early church basically being a commune, being communistic, and Jesus's express dislike of money and people who prioritize money leads me away from the Republican Party. One of my favorite Bible verses that I live by when it comes to politics is Luke 16, 13, where Jesus says, 
No servant can serve two masters. Either he will love the one and he will hate the other, or he will despise the one and he will adore the other. Man cannot serve both God and money. And I feel that when I'm making political choices, if I feel like the party or the decision at hand serves money more than it serves God, I don't like it. If it serves God, meaning that it promotes the things that Jesus taught us, loving our neighbor, loving our enemy, then that is the direction within which I will vote. But anyway, check out the Bible verses and let me know if you want me to do a fuller in-depth video on why I feel like progressive politics are founded in the Bible. That's what I base my choices on when I vote, my political choices. So I do resent Amanda and Singh's implication that one, if you're following the crowd, which I guess in this case she means progressive and Democrat crowd, you're just following the crowd just to be cool, but that's not the case. To be honest, I am much more of an outlier in my community by being a Christian progressive. Like, I am not <laughs> taking the easy way. Also, I, res I resent the idea that being progressive and Democrat and following the crowd is not following Jesus and following God. I do base my vote on the actual words Jesus Christ has spoken. Just the fact that you are going against a crowd doesn't mean that it's necessarily the right Jesus-filled path. I just need you to know that. <laughs> Next. When someone unfollows me, whether they have one follower or millions of followers, I don't take it personally because I know that God will remove people from my life that no longer have a part in my story. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't need followers. You need Jesus. You don't need people to follow you that were never really for you anyways. If you're like unfamiliar with that phrase, when we talk about someone being for us, there's a verse in the Bible that says, if God is for you, who can be against you? That's the verse that people are referring to when they say stuff like, people who are good in our lives are for us. People who are not a good presence in our lives are against us or are not for us. Again, conflating politics and religion. By claiming your cancellation is God removing bad people from your life who just aren't for you, you're making something political into something spiritual. People can absolutely be for you in a personal, spiritual, fan follower type of way and not be for your politics. That's honestly the heart of cancel culture, canceling, whatever. Followers speaking up and holding account the influencers that they follow when they do things that are hurtful so that the influencers can grow and change and be better because who are they going to listen to if not their diehard fans, you know? You experienced a cancellation because you voiced your support for Trump. To be honest, a lot of people are hurt by Trump and his politics, as is evident with things like the insurrection at the Capitol building. People canceling you, leaving you, is not God removing them from your lives because they're such bad people that God had to step in and take them away from you. Villainizing your no longer followers like that is not good either, by the way. But what it is, is people pointing out that you made a mistake, you did disappointed them, you hurt them in some way. And in my opinion, very often, people saying, oh, God, removing people from my life because they're just not for me. It comes off like a BS excuse, Amanda, so that you don't have to examine why people are leaving you. You don't have to listen to people if you just put it in the pot of, oh, well, God is doing it, not me. I didn't do anything to cause this. God is just pulling people out of my life because they were just bad, bad people who weren't for me. No, 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 no. That's not what this is. You do a similar thing a little later in the video. I genuinely love people and I love people to a fault because I am an empath. Like I feel so deeply when people are hurting and I felt that this week, but this overwhelming peace that I've had is something only God could have given me because without God, I would have been a hot mess this week and I would have questioned my confidence, my self-esteem, who I was, I probably would have went into a breakdown if I didn't have Jesus in my heart and he wasn't my savior. Um, please, for love of God, just like stop following up every single political statement you make with a God-related statement. Because I think what you're trying to say here is that you feel like the right way to be Christian is to be Republican and be Trumpy. And I just don't think that that's the case. Just like I don't think that the right way or the only good way to be Christian is to be a Democrat and to be a progressive. Like separation of church and state. <laughs> 
the more you combine the two, the more you have this big like bowl called beliefs where you're just pouring in a bunch of random things that don't have anything to do with each other and end up poisoning each other. And I just don't want that to happen to you in your mind. And I also don't want it to happen to your followers and people who are listening to you who you are influencing. At the beginning of this video, you made this statement where you were like, you know, it seems like these days the word influencer also means activist. You said it in a way of like that that was a bad thing. However, isn't that exactly what you're doing in this video? <laughs> I mean, you've said it yourself. That you're Esther, you have this big following, this big platform, this place of influence over a Christian and non-Christian audience. You're there for such a time as this to make a difference and do what? You're an activist. And I just need to ask you, do you genuinely think God gave you this platform and you feel like he's telling you that you're Esther so that you can go like spread the message that it's okay to be Trumpy? Do you really think that he has you in a place of influence influence to promote a man-made political party rather than promoting godly values like loving your neighbor, loving your enemy, praying for those who persecute you, giving to the poor, feeding the hungry, taking care of the widow and the orphan. How do you really think that God would like you to use this platform that he gave you? Ultimately, I think that it's imperative that Amanda sees this trait about herself, that she has this tendency to conflate her politics and her faith, and that in her mind she separate the two, for the good of her own sanity, and honestly, for the good of her audience as well. And considering she's probably not going to do that, at least we as an audience can recognize it and separate the two ourselves when it's possible because she really does weave them together very closely all the time. We have one more toxic tactic to get to, but this one is definitely one of the more dangerous ones because as the insurrection on January 6th should be plenty of evidence of, politics and faith really should not mix. Or you may find yourself feeling righteous motivated to do very unrighteous things. Amanda's third toxic tactic we're going to talk about for now is what I'm going to call her fake openness. And I have a lot of examples for this one, so buckle up. She says that her platform is a place of love and light. She's not trying to tell you what to think, and she wants to have discussions with people and talk and have a conversation. But also at the same time, I really don't think that she actually wants to listen to other people's perspectives at all. Let me get a little more specific. This is in no way me trying to shame anyone for their vote. Have you ever stopped to realize that one party voted for the president because they love what he's done for this country, where the other party voted based off of hate? Um, if that's not shaming someone for their vote, I don't know what is. It doesn't really give off the impression that you're all about having honest, open, educated discussion about things. Speaking of which, let's return to this timestamp. When I saw people going online saying, how can you say God is in control? And like Christians were getting attacked for saying God is in control. No one was even saying anything about who to vote for. How arrogant do you have to be to think that your thoughts and your ways are higher than God's? This is where I did get a little miffed. First of all, okay, so there's two types of people who I think would be asking, how can you say that God is in control? The first is people who don't believe in a God. There are people like that out there, Amanda. It's not arrogance for them to come and say, how can you say God is in control if they don't believe in a God? What comes off as arrogant is you assuming that they should believe in a God. The second type of person here is someone who is a Christian or another believer in God saying, how can you say God is in control? I don't know if you noticed at the time that you made this video, it was in the year 2020. It was a real crazy year, okay? A lot of stuff happened. And I am 0% surprised that there are probably a lot of people of faith out there questioning their faiths, maybe questioning the character of God and questioning like how in control is he on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, maybe he's more of a broad brushstrokes guy rather than an in the weeds, real detailed guy with individual people and individual circumstances. That's not arrogance. <laughs> that is literally people trying to understand God. And I 
I'm going to need you with your influence, especially your influence over young Christians. I'm going to need you not to shut down people's genuine questions by calling them arrogant. Maybe answer the questions with why you believe that God is in control and what that means on a day-to-day -day basis in the year 2020 when like the whole planet had a bad year, you know? Explain. Don't shame people especially believers, for having questions about their God. You've said that you're open to having differences of opinion and having discussions, but it's not respectful for you to call people's genuine questions arrogant. Directly after here, you get into that section of the way I've seen people who say they know who Jesus is and believe in him act and speak online this week makes my stomach turn. Whatever Bible you're reading is not the same Bible that the rest of us are reading. That supports my thought that the people that you're talking about here who were saying, how can you say God is in control, had identified themselves as Christians or you were assuming that they were Christians and they were Christians asking, how can you say God is in control? So you know what that says to me? Somebody who is upset, someone who is hurt, someone who is lost, someone who is grieving, someone who has gone through some things, especially this year, who is looking at the world around them and saying, this is chaos. What is happening? And instead of giving them hope, you called them arrogant. Do you see the problem that I'm having here, Miss Amanda? That's what I'm going to need you as an influencer, as a Christian influencer, who just think about how you respond. Not every question is an attack on you or God. To see so many people cast out family, friends, influencers they follow. I mean, all because the media told you that they were bad. You must not know what it's like to have to actually cut somebody out of your life because of course that is not why people cut off their friends and family members if they have to which is a highly painful process to go through. And I'm really happy if you've never had to do that. But like, oh my God, the lack of empathy and understanding and the condescension of the assumption that it was the media that was the only factor that made people cut people out of their lives. You must be joking. <laughs> Or are you just trying to hurt people and cause drama so that you can play the victim like you did with Manny MUA? We'll get there, we'll get to Manny, I promise. Don't fall into this fear mongering trap of pretending that the media is a big evil bad guy that's just out to get Republicans. That's just not a thing. You're not listening to the story of people who do have to cut people out of their lives because if you were listening, you wouldn't say stuff like this. Next up comes this really like mwah, like chef's kiss display of manipulative tactics from Miss Amanda. She does this really beautiful hypocritical back and forth. I'm never here to judge you or to treat you unfairly. I don't play the game a lot of these people play of degrading and belittling and all of the nasty things that we've all seen all over the internet. We all make mistakes. We all do things we regret, but as a friend and someone who cares, I'm here to make you question and think. If you love someone and you care about someone and they're standing on the edge of a cliff, do you say, um, I don't know, I mean, maybe you should step back a little bit, but do you? No, you say, girl, get back from that cliff. I'm about to save your life. Give me your hand. You pull that friend back before they fall off the cliff. I'm not here to shame you. You're allowed to have your own opinion. I just think that your opinion is the equivalent to standing on the edge of a cliff. And I, as a friend who cares about you, I just need to pull you back from the edge of that cliff and make you question and make you think as if being progressive or having a different interpretation of Christianity than you is like jumping off a cliff. It's that dangerous. It's that deadly. I love how you say that you're not here to play games and degrade people after you just spent the entire video shaming people passive aggressively, saying they're not acting right as Christians if they think differently than you. Assuming anyone thinking differently from you isn't basing it on facts and doing their own research and thinking. How is that not degrading or belittling? Please explain. Next, we're going to go back to when someone unfollows me, whether they have one follower or millions of followers, I don't take it personally. 
because I know that God will remove people from my life that no longer have a part in my story. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't need followers. You need Jesus. You don't need people to follow you that were never really for you anyways. God was removing these people from your life who didn't agree with you and that that was a God thing that was happening. Here's what I'll also say about that and why this is evidence of the fact that you probably aren't actually as open to conversation and discourse as you say that you are. When you're losing followers, I get what you're saying about sometimes it's okay if people just don't agree with you and they decided they don't agree with you and they move on from following you and that happens and it's okay. However, sometimes when a lot of people do it all at once, aka cancellation, usually those are people who were quote unquote for you, but you hurt them or you disappointed them in some way. It's valuable to listen to why people are leaving because it's often you, not God removing people, which sounds like a BS excuse so you don't have to examine your behavior, learn, apologize, and grow from it. You seem to not be interested in iron sharpening iron because of the way that you talk about Christians who disagree with you and people in general who disagree with you. Like I disagree with a lot of what you've said and with what you think, so I'm going out of my way to make this video. <laughs> I am doing this to help you be a good example and a good influence on the young people who undoubtedly follow you. And I think that that's what a lot of people in your comment section also were trying to do. But you took it as hate and you got defensive and you shamed people who disagreed with you. And this behavior just really contradicts the idea that you and your channel are a place that is open for discussion, you want people to form their own opinions, etc. I really want you to think about how you think about criticism that you receive. And I really hope that you learn the value of genuinely having an open heart and an open mind to listen to other perspectives and ponder them in comparison to yours. You'll be amazed at how full your life can become when you listen to other perspectives and try applying them to your own life. Let's skip ahead a little bit farther into the 11 minute section. I've never been the type of person to just follow the crowd. And I know it bothers people because when people take time out of their life to follow your life, but they're not really for you or to try to degrade you and all these things and tell you who you are, we're really not in line with the same values because my character is never up for debate. You know, God has written how he feels about me and who I am. And you can only live that every day to the best of your ability as a believer. More of the same, but specifically, Amanda, just because someone is expressing their disagreement or disappointment with you does not mean that they're degrading you. If they're quote unquote telling you who you are, what you should take from that is that that is how you are coming off to them, that you need to work on how you present yourself. And listen, it's very hard for us to see ourselves from an outside perspective. So honestly, it's really valuable to get criticism and to get comments from people letting us know, kindly or not, if we're coming off like jerks. You also said that like your character cannot be questioned because God decides it. I just, I think that the word that you must have meant there is value. God definitely describes our value in the Bible a lot. We're chosen. He knows us in our mother's womb. He knows the number of hairs on our head right? All of these beautiful self-confidence, self-esteem building verses, but those are not reflective of your character. Your character is your personality and the choices that you make and the way that you treat people. God doesn't decide that. Jesus tells us what our character should be and we try to obtain it and we can't and that's why we need salvation. But your character can absolutely be questioned and I don't mean that in a mean way. Genuinely, if that is a doctrine that was not taught to you properly, I just, I want to make sure that you know the difference between value and character. Let's move ahead to 1241 to 1259. And I feel like now I can talk about whatever I want to talk about. And that is courage that God has given me. If anything, I should be thanking the people that unfollowed and were mean to me. And so should you, because they have revealed who they are. Never let them bring you down to their level. So again, you talk about people being mean to you and I just don't think, like, were they really being mean to you? Or were they just asking you tough questions and expressing how they really feel? Like, yes, there are always haters, but was everyone who was commenting just calling you like ugly and stupid and fat? Or were people actually bringing up challenging points about your beliefs and wanting an explanation? 
Also, it sounds like you have established around yourself a conservative, Christian, Trumpy echo chamber because you're happy that everybody else left because God took them out of your life because they're just not for you. You're saying that you're just like, you're really happy and grateful about that. <laughs> Why are you so happy and grateful about that? What happened to being brave to speak our minds and you want us to speak our truth and stand up for what's right, but only if it aligns with your vague beliefs? You don't want to hear other people's points of view. You just don't. You don't want to actually listen. If you did, you wouldn't have made this video or you, you at least would have scripted it because I can tell you didn't think through everything that you said. So now we've got a couple more minutes of like similar hypocrisy. And then in this timestamp in the 15 minute mark, you pull the empath card, Amanda. Welcome to the club, the empathic YouTuber club who can't do anything wrong because they're empaths. I genuinely love people and I love people to a fault because I am an empath. Like I feel so deeply when people are hurting and I felt that this week, but this overwhelming peace that I've had is something only God could have given me because without God, I would have been a hot mess this week and I would have questioned my confidence, my self-esteem, who I was. I probably would have went into a breakdown if I didn't have Jesus in my heart and he wasn't my savior. We talked about this segment before, but I just need to say, peace is a very vague emotion that can come from a lot of sources. The only time I personally have actually felt what I consider to be God's peace was one very specific moment in 2016. I have felt peace other times for sure. There is a calm feeling that we can feel in response to being under fire. And that is really a defense mechanism, not necessarily peace from God. Just consider that maybe it would have been better for you to listen to the people who were hurt by you and your choice to vote for Trump and to question your political beliefs, to make sure that you are asking yourself why your politics cause people pain. Why do you support politics that hurt people? See if the issue really is about you being racist, which it's not, or rather about your support of a party that enacts policies that are systematically racist, which is what it really is. Again, iron sharpening iron. You need it, girl. So at the 18 minute zone, you talk about how the beauty community is toxic. Not everyone in beauty is toxic, but beauty as a whole is just a very toxic, dramatic industry. And I said I wanted to start doing other content. Like I'm still gonna be doing makeup because I love makeup, but I'm no longer being influenced or, or being around so much of the negativity and it feels so good. I would love to have you elaborate on that. Why is it toxic, Amanda? Because I know that it can't be because we call out racism where we see it, right? Because we call out homophobic and transphobic and otherwise non-inclusive language and actions. That can't be why it's toxic <laughs> because that's most of what people are canceled for. It's truly harmful stuff like that. That's not toxic in your opinion, is it? Tell us, I'm gonna move on. I finally feel like I found myself on the right side of social media, you know, like figuratively and literally like, I just feel like so many, like, it feels so good. You found yourself on the right side of social media. So you're acknowledging and accepting the fact that you're in a right-wing echo chamber, diving headfirst into it, and it feels so good. I just hope that you know that that's what you just said. A little bit earlier in the video, she said, like, the most accurate, accidentally self-aware statement I've ever heard. She said it about somebody else, but it really perfectly describes her. I'm here to tell you that anyone that claims to be your friend and claims to be for you, unless you agree with their opinions, is not your friend. And they are not someone that you should be associating with. Okay, Amanda, I won't be associating with you, I guess. Through the library of examples I just showed you in this one single video, I think it's very clear that Amanda's openness is insincere at best. I think she knows that it's expected for her to have that type of stance, but as she says herself, she feels really good surrounding herself in an echo chamber of conservative, right-wing, Trumpy social media, or as she calls it, the right side of social media. And listen, if that's what she likes, if that's how she wants to live, and that's what she wants to consume, to each their own. But don't mislead your audience into sharing their differing perspectives and opinions and life experiences if all they're going to receive in return is hate from your fans and yourself. That's not fair to your fans, and it really does not help to cultivate the platform of light and love and hope that you say that you want to have. 
So those are the big three toxic tactics that I found in Amanda Ensing's content. And Amanda, I hope that you can see your speaking for all Christians when you really should only be speaking for yourself and your own faith, your own interpretation of the Bible, combining and conflating politics and faith when the two do not belong together, and your fake openness, your lack of willingness and ability to listen to other people's perspectives as if your version of Christianity is the only right way to be Christian. We're not even onto the Manny MUA stuff yet, but as of now, I've filmed about three hours of footage for this video. I hope I can get it down, but I've been talking for about three hours about how much this worries me, concerns me, bothers me, the fear mongering, and I just, that is stuff that is very personally part of my own experience, but it led to my experience being that almost of a cult. So I just want you to know that the language that you're using is not good and you need to assess it and change it for the good of your audience. If you want your community to be a place of light and hope and love and whatever, this video was not it. Now it's finally time to talk about the Manny MUA drama where you can easily see all three of these toxic tactics at play. Not to mention an additional tactic we get to talk about. Oh, Manny, you got me fired up right now. So there was a TikTok going around that was a girl saying, tell me that you're not a Trump supporter without telling me you're not a Trump supporter. And so Manny jumped on the TikTok train and he made a TikTok where he was like putting on lip gloss. And he said, how could you tell? Something like that. So somebody commented under his TikTok and said, thoughts on Amanda Ensing? And he replied, you mean Esther? And Amanda went off on Instagram stories. This was what really made me want to make this video because she accused Manny of a lot of things that he didn't do. I don't like it when Christians take things and make them into problems that they're not actually. Why did Manny say, you mean Esther? If you don't know much about Amanda Ensing, that's kind of a random thing for him to have said. Well, Amanda Ensing on her Instagram and her Instagram stories has been talking for two months about how she really feels like God is trying to tell her something about Esther and she is being set up similar to an Esther of her time. If you're not familiar with the story of Esther, Esther was a Jewish woman who during one of the times that Israel was held in captivity kind of just so happened to end up becoming the queen of the king that had captured Israel at the time. At the time it seemed kind of random that she was chosen for this position, being put in a place of influence and power, but she realized over time that God had put her there to save the people of Israel from destruction by their captors, which involved her standing up to the king and basically risking her life in the process for her people. But thanks to God, she was brave enough to stand up and do it. And that's why there's a whole holiday about her. It's called Purim. And for more information, definitely read the book of Esther in the Bible or in the Torah. I'm pretty sure it's in the Torah. Also, let me know. I don't know. Wonderful biblical story. Amanda Ensing is gaining a lot from it at the moment. She's really feeling like God is telling her that she is an Esther in a way for some reason. I'm not really going to say anything about whether or not I believe that's true. That's not up to me. That's between her and God. But she's been talking about it a lot on her Instagram for the past few weeks. People have been commenting and saying, you go Esther. And you know, not just Manny, her fans and supporters have been calling her Esther. It's been like her new nickname. And yes, there's a spiritual, emotional significance for it for her, but it is absolutely not out of nowhere for Manny to comment and say, you mean Esther? It's not that shady. And it's not what Amanda Ensing says that it was. I don't care if you wanna talk about me or make fake accusations and claims about me as a person. I really don't care because I know who I am. But the moment you talk about God, we're gonna have an issue. It's the ugh, respect religion until it's Christianity for me. It's that everyone gets equal rights except for religion and Christianity for me. You want to make fun of the Bible and God? Let us know. What did you mean by that, Manny? All of these accusations that she was throwing around when literally Manny did this, the slightest poke at her through this Instagram story where she's talking about the Manny MUA thing. You can see the patterns that she displayed in the earlier video. Speaking for all Christians, combining and conflating politics and faith. 
and not actually wanting to listen to other perspectives. <laughs> I'm gonna take you through this Instagram story chronologically and show you where these tactics are being used. So first of all, she makes it all about politics. And all of this for what? I'm a bad person now because I didn't vote for Biden? Is that what gives you a free pass to mock my religion and make fun of me and make fun of my faith? Do you even know what Trump has done for LGBTQ in the past four years? Or are you just following the band like everyone else? So many people have been so ugly, especially in the beauty industry. Just because someone voted differently than you, it's hysterical. They want to call you every name in the book because of who you voted for, yet they don't know not even one reason of why they voted for Biden. It's just hilarious. And any reason has to do with Trump. And it doesn't even make any sense. Like, I guarantee you any of these people don't know one executive order, one bill, one policy, one law that was passed in the last four years. I thought this was an attack on Christianity, Amanda. I thought this was an attack on God. I thought this was Manny coming after your faith. Is he coming after your faith or is he coming after your politics? You need to separate these two things in your mind, Amanda. They are not the same. You know that, I think, in your head, but I think that there's some entanglement subconsciously that you don't realize is there, and you need to disentangle your faith from your politics. Next, she goes on speaking for all Christians again. And I don't I'm arguing about it because I'm so convicted in my beliefs and in my faith that I know what I believe in. But again, when it comes to God, I'm not just going to sit here. Christians don't just sit there when you attack their creator. So one... You're calling it an attack on God when it's not. He's poking the slightest amount of fun at you, if that's even what he's doing. All of your fans are calling you this nickname, Esther. But when Manny says it, then, oh, he's attacking God. Oh, oh, get ready. I'm about to battle on behalf of God. Because God can't handle himself, I guess. Amanda Ensing has to go stand up for Jesus. <laughs> I don't understand. Number two, you're sitting there speaking for all Christians again. And I don't know why, but it's even worse because you're lying in the process. Because he didn't attack your creator. Based on your example of what Christians do and don't do in a very small moment like this, I guess we don't turn the other cheek after all, even though that's what Jesus said we should do. We're not going to give Manny the benefit of the doubt, give him some grace, give him some mercy, laugh it off. We're not going to be like Stephen the martyr, who <laughs> literally, according to Acts chapter 7 verse 60, while he was being stoned to death, for being a Christian, real persecution, he literally yelled out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them about his murderers. We're not going to do that, are we, Amanda? No, we're going to go off on our Instagram stories. If that's what she thinks is what Christians do at the slightest offense, then that is exactly why I reject her as a representation of me because there's some Christian principles that I believe in that I don't think that she's displaying here. After that section, she mentions again her echo chamber that she's recently formed that she's so happy about. I don't follow people who are hypocrites. I don't follow people who are fake people intolerant people who don't love people people who are divisive and just decide oh well because you think differently than me you're a bad person so again not actually wanting to listen to other people's perspectives i can absolutely see how somebody who's not a christian or who's not jewish can look at the way that she's been talking about herself and talking about esther and how she's esther right now can look at that and say it's a little weird and might think it's a little bit funny. I get that it's significant to her. I get that it's a big part of her Christian walk right now. I get that it's really like deep within her heart that she feels like God is talking to her and she's having this whole spiritual experience. But she's also putting it out on social media. It's not just between her and God. It's between her and God and her millions of followers. People who are non-Christian followers of hers are also seeing the stuff that she's putting out. If you cannot look at yourself and your spiritualized life and see where there is space for humor and see how you come off to other people can absolutely be funny <laughs> to people who don't believe the way that you believe. And I don't even know. Manny could be Christian for all I know. I don't really know. He could be Christian, could be Catholic. I don't know his beliefs. But if you don't want anyone to poke any fun at your personal spiritual walk and these revelations you feel like you're having, then just don't put it on social media. Not that you can't talk about Christianity at all, but if it's too sensitive for this tiny of a joke, 
just don't post it. Keep it private. That's okay. Everybody has their off-limit topics, and this can be one of yours. There's nothing wrong with that. Boundaries are good. <laughs> Along with these three toxic tactics, Amanda adds a fourth, playing the victim. She actually does this quite a lot, including with some more recent Twitter drama that Smoky Glow made a really good video about. I will link that below. But I'm going to stick with this IG story as the example because this video is already long enough. I don't care if you want to talk about me or make fake accusations and claims about me as a person. I really don't care because I know who I am. It's the... Uh, Respect religion until it's Christianity for me. It's that everyone gets equal rights except for religion and Christianity for me. What did you mean by that, Manny? I'm sure you have Christians who follow you. What do they think about that? And all of this for what? I'm a bad person now because I didn't vote for Biden? Is that what gives you a free pass to mock my religion and make fun of me and make fun of my faith? It's honestly sad. It's very sad that so many people have been so ugly, especially in the beauty industry, just because someone voted differently than you, it's hysterical. And they want to call you every name in the book because of who you voted for. I would like to say I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised at all. Start being kind to people and stop judging people and stop coming after Christianity. When she has these moments where she's like, it's only cool to make fun of Christians, right? It's respect every religion except for Christianity, right? Stop making fun of a Christianity. Stop attacking Christianity. Like he didn't attack Christianity. He didn't attack God. He didn't attack anybody. He slightly poked you. That's what happened. You got a little bit of response. Not even a full-fledged joke. Not even a full-fledged diss. Because you are sharing your personal spiritual experience on social media for everyone to see, not just Christians who understand and are empathetic toward you. To turn it into Manny MUA is disrespecting God and disrespecting Christianity. Don't, don't do that. There are Christians facing real persecution in this world, facing death, facing jail sentences. You are not that, Amanda Ensing. And in my opinion, this Christian victim mentality is part of what makes people dislike us. Let me just be real with you. Christians and Catholics have always made up the majority of the USA. For centuries, we violently forced our religion onto others through crusades and colonialism and called anybody non-white and non-Christian a savage who needed to be converted. That forced dominance and majority is why people feel okay poking fun at us, because we're gonna be fine. <laughs> Punching down to a small struggling minority group is an attack, but when it's a strong majority group that has plenty of influence and dominance, yeah, people are gonna feel justified cracking jokes on us. <laughs> Even more so when Christians get so easily offended and act like this tiny poke was like a punch in the eye and they're falling and bleeding and rolling and crying on the ground and just like acting foolish over nothing. And if Manny just wanted a reaction, you gave him one. <laughs> This fear-mongering mentality of taking this tiny little thing and blowing it up into this much larger, scarier monster than what it actually is. This is exactly the type of stuff that the people at the church I grew up in, not all of them, but some of them, would have looked at a statement like that and done what you did and made it into attacking God and making it this big emotional Christian battle for the soul of America. What? Well, that's not what it is. Misplaced, exaggerated victimhood is dangerous and toxic because it takes important attention away from people who are really suffering. I really wish that Amanda and other American Christians would recognize their social, cultural privilege because Christianity is the majority religion in the USA and stop pretending that each little joke or poke is an act of oppression when you know that it's not. That's why I wanted to point out this fourth toxic tactic, her tendency to play the victim, which came through really obviously in this Instagram story. So basically, this whole Manny situation didn't need to be a situation. She blew it out of proportion and made it into something so that she had something to complain about and make herself the victim of, in my opinion. The fact that this IG story has this victimization tactic plus the main three tactics we've already talked about show that these tactics come naturally to her. She just does it all the time and you can see it in Twitter drama and in a lot of other stuff that's been going on around her. So in my opinion, that makes her not the greatest influence on young people, especially Christian young people who are looking to her as a Christian example. Her understanding and practice of Christianity is pretty narrow, politicized 
politicized and skewed, which makes her somebody who I would not recommend as a Christian influencer. So in conclusion, we're there. We're finally there. Amanda Ensing very clearly uses three, or really four, tactics that I consider to be toxic toward her followers when she's in moments like the What's Next for America video and the IG story aimed at Manny MUA when she's feeling called out and on the defense. One, she tries to speak for all Christians, and she shouldn't. No Christian should. Next, she loves to combine and conflate her politics and her faith which as a person who grew up in an environment that did that, to me is highly dangerous. Third, it's clear to me based on her actions and her statements that as much as Amanda says that she's open to discussion and wants you to do your own research and find your own opinion, that openness is insincere and really it's conditional. If you come to the same conclusions as her, then you're welcome to state your beliefs. Otherwise, you will receive a lot of hate from her and her audience. People can be for you and still disagree with you. And that's part of why they're sharing their disagreement with you. If they didn't share their disagreement with you, then it's not important enough to them to see you grow and become better and become the best version of yourself. That's why I'm making this video instead of any other drama video that I could have made over the past six months because this is a Christian issue, which is much more important to me than makeup stuff and lawsuits. Anybody and everybody who's watching at this time, thank you so much for watching this very long video. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you subscribe to become part of the neighborhood here on my channel. Feel free to like this video if you like it. Share it if you found it valuable or interesting. And also, I would really love for Amanda to actually see this. Right now at the end of recording, I'm looking at about six hours of footage that I need to edit. And yeah, hi, editing Hannah here at the end of editing this video. This video has taken up most of the time that I was trying to take off as a break after Pretty Hippie Christmas. So I just, I might need a few more days off before I come back to my regular schedule. I just cannot touch a laptop or a YouTube for a couple days if that's okay with y'all. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching my channel. I really appreciate you and your time. So much love. I'll be back soon, officially. Bye.